Chase Cole, obviously, uh, are late out of the side. But uh, don't worry, you've got uh, blokes uh, of the echelon uh, here of uh, Brett Marnie, Matt Shannon, Nick Fothergill, Mick Mattingly, Jamison Daniels, Tommy Priest, Nathan Maroney, uh, Zach Keogh. Uh, you know, the list just goes on and on and on. Patrick Marks, who can roll through the midfield as well. I mean, all of these guys here are real quality players and, you know, would be highly sought after players in any competition in any amateur league right across the state. There's no doubt about that. So. I mean, it's probably uh, a bit of a square up here um, without trying to sound, uh, I guess, um, too cocky or anything like that. That's what that we're Jason, here for. That Jason Cole isn't actually playing today because yeah. I'll tell you what, in terms of the quality of the Golden Valley League midfield, I don't think I've seen it bat as deep as this, uh, well, for the last sort of six to eight years. This is a... Like I said, it's it's basically the dream team. I don't think that under the circumstances, really, other than a couple of blokes, we could have put a better side out here this afternoon, stats man. And I'm expecting a really, really strong showing from the Golden Valley League. Well, I'm sure that the uh, Western and di Districts uh, Football League plus. Uh they got their plays as well, but we've got swing men as well, like Teddy Linden can go forward, he's going to start down back. We've got Lockie Smith that can go forward, he can start down back. Paddy Marks, as you said, goes into the midfield, he can also go up forward. He's on Collingwood's uh, list of players, so, it, you know, and I'm sure that the Western Region Football League have got the same, so it's going to be a really ripping contest. All right, so we're just a few moments away, all players in their positions. And Jason Welsh from 1FM is going to get us underway. I certainly will, and here we go. The senior clash now gets underway. Zachy Norris in the middle of the ground wins first blood, but it's ineffective. Brett Marnie came in, picked it up. Umpire gets it straight back underway. It does come down to Brett Marnie here now. Keo works his way through. He wins the first centre clearance there. Up the centre half forward, charging at it was Harry Boyd. He couldn't quite control it. Now off one step. Nick Fothergill, surely not. Yes, indeed. The Golden Valley League get the first in 24 seconds and Nick Fothergill is the owner of the first major score here and Nick Fothergill has been on fire in season 2019 after swapping from the Murray Football League last year which is a real step up to Golden Valley League but he has been more than capable and uh, I believe he's kicked 15 goals for the season so far with the Tat Footy Club and he's probably leading our Morrison medal at this point in time. You call a bullet goal Jase, 38 seconds. So back in the middle Norris wins the tap again but gathered by uh, for the Western Region Football League by Hodgson. Lays it off in midfield to Seawork who's mown down and pink for holding the ball. So it's going to go Goulburn Valley's way through the middle. There's absolutely not a breath of wind out there at Avalon Airport Oval. So you're going to have to win on merit every quarter. There's no question. They work it laterally into a bit of space out wide. It's Goulburn Valley maintaining all the possession. Mattingly takes the mark. Chip little ball over the top, finds Holman, he was dispossessed and the WR Falcon bring it the other way. Bullet pass down the wind, Jenkins slips over, it still might fall promisingly for him but it doesn't. They've got the numbers at the back, short ball out wide by Ryan. Yep, Jamison Daniels takes the mark on the halfback flank, now kicks it to a one-on-one -on -one situation and Andrew Narco, you talk about players that are on fire in this season. Now Fothergill again now kicks the ball up towards an R forward. Pettifer has two to beat. This time he's tackled. Handball just got it away there. Umpire sit, let it go. Marnie now. This is a handball over the top. Dangerous signs here for the Western Region Football League. They're now able to clear it out. This is through the agency of Buckicks. Buckicks is a short kick there. Goes to Kennedy. He takes the mark and he finds uh, Branca Tancio, who's a uh, kick now up to centre half forward. Finds a teammate there, now running over the top. Should be a goal here. Jenkins off the deck for the Western Region Footy League and they strike back here. Yes, indeed, they do. Goal umpire gives the two finger salute and it is uh, one goal straight apiece. We've played three minutes into the first term here on Winners at 98.5 or 1FM. Yes, uh, great to be back with the call, guys. Uh, it's um, yeah, interesting start here. It's phonetic. 
bullet of gate stuff from uh, from the Goulburn Valley League, but uh, a real settler in the Western Region League with Timmy Jenkins. A bit like the under-18s trying to get in over the back, and that's how they scored their goals in the under-18s, and uh, we saw that there in the seniors from the WRFL. So both, both rocks went up, neither had a meaningful tap, it knocked, knocked around through the congestion, ends up in the arms of Kennedy, he's wrapped up. They'll ball it up, still on the edge of the circles. One straight apiece. Both rucks go at it. Maloney wins it down straight to the arms there of McDonald. who kicks a high ball inside 50, searching for his teammate there in Junker. Camped in the pocket, gathers, stays up, hand pass to a teammate, well smothered. In defence there by Marks for Goulburn Valley. It'll be thrown in the right forward pocket to the city end. So, 35 metres out for the Western Region Football League. You can feel the tension around the ground here. The atmosphere really has changed. Well done there, Western Region Footy League clear it out. Um, looking for Kennedy back, but uh, good body on him. Means that he's uh, unable to cleanly possess the footy. Now Andronaco links up with Jamison Daniels, who a little bit of a handball to himself there. Poor kick going inside 50. Easy pickings to the centre half back for the Western Region Football League. Loose looking kick though, picked up there by Maloney. Ambles back in board now. Panay overran it. And it goes over the line for a boundary throw in. Gee, that was some pickup by Declan Maloney on the wing on the half volley for a Ruckman. So true centre wing position here. Six points apiece, five minutes gone, first term. At the throw in, Kennedy kick partially smothered. It hangs in the air for a moment inside the centre square. It falls the way of Goulburn Valley. Is it dragged back in? No, said the umpire. Ball up. Front edge of the centre square to the end. Western Region Footy League are attacking. Five minutes gone in the opener. One goal apiece. So Norris won the tap. Steve Kennedy won the clearance, but he was tied up in a tackle. That's an area where the Western Region could really struggle with Luke, Ger Luke Gertz going out. They seem to lack a bit of height in the ruck. So Mattingly wins that one. And his kick is misguided straight down the throat of Kelly Pickard, who goes out wide now to Joshy McDonald, who beats his opponent there on that occasion. And gets a handball going forward now. Spearing pass inside 50. That is an elite kick right there. Beautiful pass. And Oscar Junker will have the shot on goal. 35 metres out is where the kick will leave his boot. And uh, a bit stronger than a 45 degree angle here. So this would be a really good start for the Western Region Football League. From just up the road at Werribee District, so about a great start of the season, one of their many talented young players. So Junker now rolls in, his kick is right across the face, it's not even going to score. Mitch Brett's there for the Goulburn Valley League, and he fists it over the line and will have a boundary throw in. Deep inside attacking 50 for the Western Region Football League, poor kick on goal that. Yeah, just tried to guide it and it skewed off the side of the boot. Still not a bad result. Get a chance to reset. Throw in. Junker now in the ruck work. Wins it down to Jenkins who just overran it. Opportunity for Goulburn Valley. They've got numbers. Mattingly received the hand. Late back and then the kick out of defence. Half volley for Picard. Too difficult. And then a scrubbing ball down the wings. Going to gain some valuable meterage for Goulburn Valley. And it goes over right in front of Cole Mueller. And it will be thrown in. Just four to the wing for Goulburn Valley. Still one straight six apiece. Seven gone in the opening term. So boundary umpire launches it high. It didn't quite come in far enough, so I reckon this will have to be a re-throw. Just sort of released the pill a little bit early. It went uh, very high, but didn't go very far. So the umpire calls it back. We'll have another go, the young fella. This time, he hoiks it over his shoulder. Tapped down by Norris, but again, they win the clearance here. And the Western Region Footy League seem to be right on top in that area. Maloney's kick, though, was poor, and it was cut off at half back there by Marks, who got it over to home and now kick up the centre half forward. Now Jamison Daniels with an opportunity, kicked it to Keo. I think it was an accident. He got one over the shoulder. 
and almost uh, Joel Selwood like just took the contact and the arm rode up the shoulder and the umpire was in the perfect position to adjudicate that one probably not so much so if you're a western region football league fan they'll be disappointed giving away that free kick they've worked really hard over the last five minutes to sort of clog up the game and get in a bit and get a bit of parity in the contest they don't want to give away a cheap goal here so keo strolls in side 50 the kick isn't going to be a goal he's pulled it to the left and he has had a huge impact in the Golden Valley League since he's entered. Former uh, VFL listed player. KO will have an opportunity to cut this off, but no chance with that bullet pass there who hits the chest of Viojo Rainbow. So Viojo Rainbow out wide to the wing. Ferrari dropped the mark he should have taken. Did well to lay it off to his teammate who was tackled by two Golden Valley opponents. I think we've got a uh, surname topper there. Yes, the former, Ojo former Rainbow. Carlton player. He was on Carlton's list, I think, and Port Melbourne in the VFL. Kennedy to Seawek, back to Kennedy. Hand pass a little bit too strong for his intended target. And they are able to, oh, a little bit of a mix up at half back. And now the Dogs, Western Region, get onto the football. This is Jenkins, couldn't keep it in. Yep. Just a bit of pressure there on Patrick Marks. The dogs and the purples. Is that what you are? Oh. Do you have an animal or anything? No, not really. <laughs> We've got the stats man. He's a bit, bit, a bit of a Golden Valley League mascot over the years. <laughs> As the boundary umpire throws it in, picked up by Keo, who shovels a handball back there to Brad Ryan, who lost it. Now another opportunity here for the Golden Valley League through Paddy Marks. He lost it as well. It's a nil-all draw and the ball goes over the line. Of course, Nayef Hammett. We might not have an animal, but we do have the beast out there in Brett Barney. That's his nickname. Yep. And he is a beast indeed. Got one all day, although he's been pretty quiet so far. Just the two disposals. At the throw-in. Neither Ruck had a telling tap. It's still at left half forward. They just got a little kick inside 50, but it was chopped off straight away by Marone for Goldman Valley. Kicks into an acre of space right in the gut. It's a foot race there. Shoved out of the way was Shebeki. An opportunity now. They soccer on again inside 50, Goldman Valley. It works out okay. Brilliant gather on the bounce by Mueller. He steadies and wobbles a kick off his left boot. And it misses to the right. The minor score his second, no, his first behind rather, Zach Cole Mueller. 128 Goldman Valley. WRFL one straight, 6-11 gone. He's kicked, uh, played two games this year and kicked 13 goals in them as Kyle Mueller. So he does know where the big sticks are. Don't worry about that. Good defence there by the Western Region. Tuppen goes back to full back now. This bloke can kick the ball. Goodness gracious me, he has got a leg on him. No doubt about it as Steve Kennedy takes the mark for the WRFL at half back. Now he goes further afield now to Gareth Newton. They build towards something here to the Dogs. Now back to Kennedy. Runs, carries about five metres, then boots at about 40. Goes over the head of Andrew Panay. Pan Panay. Panay, okay. We'll go with Panay, P-A-N-A-Y-I. -I. Interesting, you don't often see Y's and I's together. No, not at all. At the throw in inside 50, 40 metres out from the Western Region's goal, but Goulburn Valley can escape, but it was kicked straight into the arms there of Ethan Taylor, the youngster, Rookie of the Year last year in the Western Region Footy League. He forces a stoppage 55 metres out from goal at right half forward. And uh, I do believe he played in the under-18s earlier today too. Ethan Taylor? Don't think so. Well, that would have to be close to a first, wouldn't it, in interleague footy? Backing it up. No, not 100% sure. We'll get back to you on that one. Be a first, I reckon. Now Keo, who's winning a fair bit of the pill. Mason, Mason Taylor. Yep. It looks quite similar. There you go. He goes to... Uh, brothers? Brothers? Nicholas no. Fothergill, <laughs> who has it. His pass is OK. It's a full back and Lockie Smith now out wide to Holman. This is the Tom model. His brother, Nick Holman. Gold Coast, yes. Plays at the Gold Coast Suns. You are correct. Yep.
by Abram Boyce as the handball goes out in front of Andronarko whose kicks pretty clever inside 50 but Cole Mueller was under the pump there because Josh Mould did extremely well. A handball comes back there from Buckix now to uh, Nielsen and Nielsen's kick was poor it was cut off by the Goulburn Valley League and bravely back with the flight there Brad Whitford takes the mark for the GVL and Brad Whitford who was the late inclusion for Jason Cole has a set shot opportunity he'll kick from 45 metres out, not much of an angle to speak of. Whitford now crosses the dust of the 50 metre arc. He gets underneath the kick. Is it going to have the distance? Yes. Is it going to have the accuracy? No. Goes through for a minor score. So the Golden Valley League now 1 2 8 lead the WRFL 1 straight 6. 13 and a half gone first term. You should probably stick to playing guitar in Aerosmith, Brad Whitford. <laughs> Daniel no, should he, he plays footy okay too. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Different guy, I know. Wouldn't, wouldn't mind his bank account. <laughs> Shares it out wide with Nick Bucks and then goes up the line. The dogs have worked it to right half back. A raking right foot kick beyond the wing. Tuppen went up. Panai as well. It falls to the back. Goulburn Valley with the numbers, but they've lost it. And now into the middle of the ground, an opportunity. It was partially smothered, though, and getting onto it there well for Golden, Golden Valley was Marone. He couldn't get it into any space. It's turned over. The dogs come up with it, but they've turned it over as well. So it's a bit like the under-18s. They have the extra man on the wing, and the hand pass eventually finds its way now to Harry Boyd who coughs it up at left half forward for Goulburn Valley. They dive in, the dogs apply the pressure. Is it going to come out? Yes, it, it does. It does eventually with a kick, and then Kennedy got in the way and chopped it off. Yeah, Brett Marnie's kick there, he just rushed. And uh, now they have an opportunity to bounce back off their halfback flank here. The Western Region Footy League are well trapped there by Holman, who gets his body over it really good, then feeds a handball over his head, taken high there, and a free kick will go to Joshy McDonald. Just come on the ground, Josh McDonald, real live wire from Altona. Yes. Uh, Nath Fothergill was the offender there, and that's a shocking kick. Just come on the ground, two kicks, two turnovers. So you won't be happy with that start, Josh McDonald. Now Holman, who's, geez, put on some size. Tommy Holman, up towards uh, true centre wing. Mark almost taken there by Angus Byrne, who goes up the centre half forward. Oh, smart little tap forward there by Mueller. Penifer overran the footy though, now picked up. Switch in board. We'll find the chest of uh, Dan Nielsen. So Seawick works it out wide and finds Ethan Taylor, kicks into a central position for Bran Catazano, who gets on his bike from 50. It's a low spearing ball. It, oh, it was, surely that was a mark in the end to the Goulburn Valley defence. It's still alive for the dogs if they want it. It's loose in the pocket. It's gathered there close to the boundary line by Priest, who works it calmly out of defence and then inboard for Mattingly. So they got out of trouble all right there, Goulburn Valley. So Mick Mattingly skillfully turns his opponent inside out, then runs around onto his preferred, gets it up to the half forward flank now the chase is on out wide here a really good tackle came from Brody Webster and the umpire paused momentarily and you sort of think, well is he going to pay a free kick here no is the answer we'll have a ball up we've played 16 and a half into the first term it's a three point lead to the Goulburn Valley League good game of footy so far and there's a little bit concerned when we're talking pre-game about the buy-in levels of your league in terms of the best possible available to what we had and I thought well gee I hope it's not a totally lopsided mm. contest but it's far from that at this point in time there's the ball now back in the middle of the ground Peppy so Jenkins gathers it kicks up towards half forward searching for a teammate there in uh, Gareth Newton who was brought down in a tackle it's going to be balled up yeah, that issue of buy-in, Jason, has been a real issue in recent years for the WRFL, but I think some of those results uh, have sort of chastened them and led to a bit of a, a rethink in how they structure their representative teams. Yep. Hamad trying to burst through for the WRFL, and then Jenkins, I think, is going to win a free kick for a high tackle here. Might have been a little bit stiff, but still... Yeah, a bit, still, bit soft, that one. There's not a whole lot of him, Tim Jenkins. Only 168 centimetres, barely taller than me, which isn't hard. Jenkins tries to unwind, and 
Misses the target. Junker in the pocket. Can he do something special? He centers it up. It's full of Golden Valley defenders. They almost spoil themselves, but the mark is taken, though, by Witt for the inclusion. Bit of a lack of talk back by the Golden Valley defenders. He'll go out to Lockie Smith now, who wheels around. It'll be with Matty Shannon, whose kick up towards the centre wing is poor, and it's intercepted. Middle of the ground now. Gee, this would be a bad turnover. It was. Now Sam Keogh has the footy. He gets it out front of Jamison Daniels. The legs are pumping really hard. Is it going to bounce for him? Yes, it does. He picks it up. He handballs it back to Paddy Marks up the centre half forward, charging at the football now. Big jump over the top there. Andrew Narco couldn't hold on to the mark though in the Western Region. Football League will get a little bit of a reprieve here with a kick out of centre half back out wide. One-on-one -on -one contest. Ball over the line. Matty Shannon happy enough to see it out in front of the scoreboard. Three-point ball game here. Golden Valley lead. 19 gone first term. Great work there on the last line by I think Kelly Pickard and also uh, maybe Jacob Mould down there on the last line really using their body well, anticipating well. Had to throw in Tuppen from behind but it's one down in the path of Golden Valley. A deep kick inside 50. Leaping up at the footy unable to take the mark. Ferrari at the back. Moan down there by Webster who was the man who went mark first time. Be a ball up 40 metres out. He can take a hanger to Brody Webster. Kick five last week against the Shep footy club for his home club, Benalla, and another soft free kick inside 50. This way it's going to go the way of the Golden Valley Football League and it'll be Nick Warnock who has his first set shot on goal. Looks as though the umpire didn't like the way that he was held there and Warnock, he's a beautiful kicker, the Sharon, on a very, very slight angle. This would be a handy little goal here for the Golden Valley League. Warnock waltzes in. The right foot kick is pulled a little to the left and it'll go through for a minor score. So 1 for 10 now. The Golden Valley League move on to over the Western Region Football League. One straight six. 20 minutes gone in the first term. Stats man. Boys, inside 50 zones. The WRFL uh, 8 to the Go Tape Golden Valley Football League 6 and clearances at 10 apiece. So very evenly matched contest at the moment, although five scoring shots to one at the minute. And fortunately for the Western Region Football League, and unfortunately for the Golden Valley League, four of those have been behinds. So it's been a tough start for both teams. Pretty physical, lots of running early. Boundary throw in at right half forward for Golden Valley. They all dive in. It spills out to Kennedy. Received the hand pass into a bit of space. Throws it over the boot. It's all Golden Valley on the wing. The mark's taken by Smith. Who's held up by Junker. He goes short in board for Shannon. Oh, who had his kick smothered there by... Uh, McDonald, brilliant second effort. It opens the door for the WRFL. The hand pass comes out. They've got to take their chances here. Newton swings onto the right boot. It's curling. It's not going to get the journey. Oh, Panay used his body well, but then it was great defence in the end for Golden Valley by Priest, who knocked it through for a rushed behind. Yeah, Tommy Priest has done really well there. There's a certain goal. The Western Region Footy League. Now Teddy Linden holds it in the back pocket for the purples. He switches it wide and Nick Fothergill gets a position in the back pocket. And Fothergill. See any descendant of Des Fothergill, the famous Collingwood uh, Brownlow medalist? I'm not really sure to be honest with you. It's a pretty famous footballing name. Yeah, up to the halfback flank picked up by Jamison Daniels, looping handball there for Marnie, for Keogh. They turned over the footy. Now the Western Region Footy League come back through the middle of the ground now. Opportunity for Viojo Rainbow, who goes out now to Bucks. Bucks' kick is good. And it finds the chest of running through Tim Jenkins, who looked to struggle with this kind of... when he had a shot a little bit earlier on in the quarter. Doesn't look confident now either. No. It just loads up on the right foot and puts it to the hot spot. Almost a mark taken over the back there by Nayef Hammond. But instead it goes over the line and uh, it didn't go through for a minor. It went no, over behind. the line for an actual... There's a little uh, padded post over there yes. that looks... It, it's, it's, very confu it's very confusing. Yeah, that's exactly You'll probably right. mark that up a few times today. That's okay. We all do it. That's okay. As uh, the boundary umpire threw it in. 
and away the Golden Valley League go through Fothergill, who gets them outside of their defensive area, only momentarily it rolls back in, very shallow entry, and it's really a rolling maul of players that see the ball back inside the Western Region Football League's 50 metre arc, where the umpire will throw it up. From the ball up, it's knocked out of defensive 50 for Golden Valley, but straight back in. An entry to a dangerous spot. Junker from the back almost brought down. Mark couldn't quite. The hand pass comes out. Panai normally pretty good in these situations. That's high That's contact high. almost. The umpire Ooh. let it go. Then they drop the ball. They let that go as well. Still an opportunity for the Western Region Football League. And they've given away a free kick for holding the ball. So good pressure. Right on the bell. Quarter time from Avalon Airport Oval between the Western Region Football League and the Goulburn Valley Football League. Not a lot of goals to talk about. Two of them happened in about the first minute. And then since then, a few missed chances, plenty of pressure, but it's been entertaining. And a short quarter as well. 23 and three quarter minutes it went for. Goulburn Valley by three points at the first change. 1-4-10 to 1-1-7. One, one, Nick Fothergill, the goal scorer for the visitors. Tim Jenkins with one for the home side. We're going to take a break on 88.9 Win FM. If you're at the ground, 90.1 is the under. Can't sell. I don't really no. sell screw-ins or metal studs anymore. So we're back in the middle of the ground and we'll get this second quarter underway. Up in the ruck there, Maloney. He taps it down. One out now by Kennedy, who handballs it back to his teammate there, who sends the ball going forward to Shebeki. Remember a Tony Shebeki on... Yeah, it's his son. Yeah. It is, is yep. it? Shebeks on SEN. There you go. Reads the votes uh, from time to time does. for yes. the Western Region Footy League. And Best former and caller. Fairest. Former caller for the uh, Win FM too as well. Uh, Shebeki, Tony. Oh, great work, Shebeks. Did they used to give him some stick on SEN. <laughs> Still does the voiceovers at the MCG. Okay. <laughs> President of the AFL Media Association as well. Oh, there you go. Is there anything he doesn't do? <laughs> Does he break his legs? Jumping off a bike? He might even be Prime Minister at the end of today, boys. <laughs> he might very well be. Don't forget to vote if you haven't already. Keo set the ball forward. Now charging out to take the mark there was Warnock. He got one grab, but he couldn't quite take the second. Cut off there. Well done, Ryan. Played on quickly, though. Over to the half-forward flank. This might work out OK. Nathan Moroni now kicks it up in the Pettifer direction. Pettifer on the half volley. Pushed off the footy. Won by Kennedy. Long, looping handball. Out wide there. Big body came from Mattingly, though. And the tackle was ferocious by Teddy Linden. They win the footy back here. The Golden Valley League on the half-forward flank. The whistle went... The uh, player out there, it might have been in Matty Shannon, wanted a free kick, and the umpire said no. We'll throw it in instead. Far side of Avalon Airport footy ground here, the old Werribee VFA ground. So ball up, right half forward for Goulburn Valley. Haven't added to the quarter time score, and they're going to do a, have a secondary stoppage here. It's still a three-point lead to Goulburn Valley. 1-4 to 1-1. One, one. The stoppage. It's one down there by Norris for the visitors. It's pulled back into the congestion again and I think we're going to have another stoppage. We are. It did get shoveled out of there but not before the umpire had blown his whistle. So umpire throws the footy back up. Tapped down by Norris. Jamison Daniels was there. Tried to snatch it but in the end it worked out pretty well for uh, Jordan Boyd who got it up to a centre wing. Now Junker was there. He wasn't able to take the mark, but he sent the ball back in a teammate's direction, throwing his body at it once again. Is Junker, who picked up by Brett Marnie, who was ragged old off it. Somehow ends up with Teddy Linden. Shocking pass though, Teddy. Straight onto the chest of Maloney. Maloney's kick is a beauty to Panai. Panai now got it over towards McDonald. McDonald streams inside 50, couldn't quite finish it. And in the end, not sure whether or not he intended 
to pass it to Timmy Jenkins or he was looking to kick the goal himself. Either way, it's gone through for a minor score and the first score is a point to the Western Region Football League of the second quarter. And it might come back inside. A hand pass for Daniel Nielsen. Lowers the eyes, looks for Kennedy, finds him. Too far out to score. He moves it on quickly and finds Panay, who's good on ground level. He couldn't quite grasp it in the end. He might get a second chance. Hand pass over the top. They're under the pump in defence here, Goulburn Valley. Brett Marnie, the vice captain, gets onto it. He delivers out wide for Weirden. And then his kick was poor. It's chopped off, but they couldn't gather it cleanly. Prismal, he pokes it into the pocket. Gathered by Panay, snaps towards goal. And it's marked on the last line by Marks, who delivers short for Smith, and they can exit. It's actually, uh, sorry, Teddy Linden. I should have fixed that up for you earlier on. It was Paddy Weirden's one of the withdrawals the other day as well as it was picked up Andrew Narco got tackled lost the footy and a kick came up to full forward from Bucks and went through for another behind so Mitchie Brett now this is a little bit cleaner from the Golden Valley League out towards Brett Marnie he goes further afield now and looking for Zach Norris couldn't quite find him so turnover once again here now it's on the half forward flank Stopping and propping with a neat little kick over the top. Finding Tuppen. The kick there came from Nayef Hamid. Now the kick now up to full forward is intercepted by Mitchie Brett. Mitch Brett's kick is high and it makes it really hard work for his teammate there. He's down who's behind. down behind. No, Nath Moroni actually was able to get back to his feet and kick the ball up towards the half forward flank flying at it there was Kyle Mueller he couldn't take the mark now it's picked up handboard back in board to Moroni who's got something he likes further afield here and the mark taken by Kane Pettifer read that situation beautifully 25 meters out almost directly in front he's a great kick on goal yeah. you don't kick 100 in a season if you're not and Kane Pettifer will he's been, line up he's looked a little bit off the pace so far in this game came Pettifer he of course we know him from the AFL and he's come into the game with big raps for his exploits in the uh, Golden Valley League hasn't uh, been quite on top of it so far today but this can certainly spark him up here back him in from here he certainly would as Kane Pettifer rolls in the kick looks A-OK -okay off the boot and he splits the middle for the GVL and they kick their second of the game 2-4, 16, seven point lead over the Western Region Football League. One, three, nine, five and a half gone in the second term. Stats man, what are you finding here so far in the second quarter? Well, that was only the second entry to the Go Tave Garden Valley Football League for the quarter and the Western Region Football League had five entries for only two behind. So, yeah, wasting efficiency inside forward 50 of the Western Region Football League right at this minute. But they're getting in there though, that's a worry. Norris and Maloney. Norris decisively down but streaming off half back come the WRFL. Hand pass sweeps out wide for Jordan Boyd. Can't get onto his favoured side. He was caught high. An aggressive tackle that slipped a little high should there have, from Shadow. Should have been caught holding the ball as a poor, tack poor tackling attempt. It so didn't stick. Fisted over the line. Just going back to that Pettifer goal, it was a lovely kick. Like he didn't take a long run up and he didn't really kick through the ball. He just stabbed at it and went through a post high. Yeah, he's a beautiful kicker, the Sharon. As tap down there, Norris in front of Keo, who got a bump from Cywek and eventually dives on the footy. Both players do, and the umpire says, I'll have it. So Norris again, taps it down, Cywek had it, lost it, picked up by Daniels, thought about the handball, just paused momentarily, and then did eventually get the handball out intended for Maddie Shannon. But that 4A forward by Jordan Boyd, strong, strong, ta off. Yeah. strong tackle there by Shannon, but he really sort of slung his opponent down, that can be a bit dangerous. Yeah, West have dropped Daniel Shebeki to play that loose man uh, across half back at the moment. Thank you very much from down on the boundary there. Kane Pettifer applies the tackle and causes this stoppage. It was Kelly Pickard not able to control the ball. Seven point lead to the Golden Valley.
Eight minutes gone, second term. At the throw in, it's knocked over the back. Seawet gets onto the footy, finds a bit of space where there was none. Kicks up towards Brand Catazano, worked his opponent out of it there in Mitch Brett. Kicks inside the 50, out in the direction there of uh, Newton, who marks and wanted to move it on quickly, but instead he thought better of it. He's going to have the set shot. Man on the mark about 40 metres out. Then, slightly left of centre. Yeah, this gets it back to a point of difference, but Brand Catizano, he's a class ball user. You can tell that um, he's certainly a really high quality player. And he's one of those guys that would probably slot into any side anywhere he went, you would think. Gareth Newton, 45 metres out, right foot drop, punt, his near side misses. An opportunity goes begging for the Dogs. They're 1 3 9 to 2 4 16. So now Fothergill with it. That fullback for the Golden Valley finds Mitchy Brett, who's got a little bit of time to run and carry the football and then create a good bit of distance going forward for them through Boyd. His kick was pretty good then. It went to Jamison Daniels up towards Mueller, who slid down on all fours and couldn't quite take the mark. The kick again just needs to be that couple of centimetres better coming in from the Golden Valley League at the moment. When they do go inside 50, easy to repel for the Western Region Football League defence. And the ball now on the centre wing with the boundary umpire to be thrown in. Ball up. Front and centre there was Edwards for the WRFL. He was beset upon straight away by Harry Boyd. Another ball up. Of course, Harry Boyd, former Werribee VFL, Jason. Yes, you'd be very uh, familiar with this ground. It's picked up by Jackson Edwards, who just hoiks it forward up to centre half forward. No mark. Picked up and handballed straight from Kennedy over to Jamison Daniels, who went up towards the centre half forward in the direction of Angus Byrne, who couldn't quite take the mark. Now half forward, they charge in. Hodson up to the hot spot. The umpires Down found field. a free kick. And it was late contact. And pr pretty poor discipline there, actually. No need to smart. do that. No, it was poor because now the free kick's been given 40 metres out, sorry, 30 metres out, if you're lucky, directly in front. And this should result in a Western Region Football League goal. If you give away the free kick at 50 on the boundary, it's not that hard. But downfield, it's a killer. And this will lock up the scores too, so... So the kick on its way has gone straight over the goal umpire's hat and tied this ball game. So poor discipline there from Paddy Marks has ultimately cost the Golden Valley League that goal. They were pushing, pushing, pushing with the Western Region Football mm. League and eventually they are able to finish off with a goal, but it is the result of some pretty poor defence by so, the Golden Valley League. Yeah, it probably does get, give uh, WRFL reward for effort. They've uh, you know, weathered a pretty tough start and now they're on top. So Kennedy out of the middle, back inside 50 they go again now the western region football league junker attack the footy hard now it comes down to jenkins a neat little pass there did it travel the required 15. umpire said yes won't, be, won't be buying real estate off you anytime <laughs> soon mate very slick ball movement though by uh some of the uh the western region mosquito flip they're yeah. not a big side but they've got a lot of these very slippery smaller players like brand catazano who goes in board now yeah panai looked to center the ball and it's hit the post jackson edwards probably needed to do a little bit better so that's a little bit of a let off there for the golden valley league Goes through for a minor score. Mitchie Brett has it at fullback. So Brett's going to take it out the Werribee City wing. Up in the direction there of Mattingly, who knocks it down in the direction of his teammate and kicks over the head of Angus Byrne to run onto. He's tapping it away from uh, Daniel Nielsen, who keeps chase. They've worked it all the way up to the 50. On the money here, hand pass releases a teammate. There's going to be a shot at goal from 40, and the finish is sublime. And the goal kicker. Can't quite see the number. 
Is it Kyle Mueller that just kicked that goal there? It's a beautiful finish. It sure was. It puts Gulban Valley back in front. 3 4 22 to 2 5 17. Yeah, that'd be uh, Kyle Mueller down there, who's actually the goal kicker. You can put that one yeah, down in your pencil book there. It in. But a really classy finish. So now that's 14 goals in three weeks. One in the interleague game, and it really matters. So Sam Keogh shovels a handball. Now to Boyd, up towards full forward, charging at it. Flat out there was Webster, couldn't quite take the mark. Paddles it out in front of him again there. Gus Byrne, now an opportunity for Moroni. Off one step, outside, 50 goes, bang! And the Goulburn Valley lead two consecutive goals in under a minute. And really, when you felt as though the Western Region Football League had all of the momentum, the Goulburn Valley League through Nath Moroni, something out of nothing there, opportunistic, nails it for the Goulburn Valley and they push out now to a... Uh, 11 point lead. Call that very well uh, Jason, yes he did go bang didn't take much of a run up either but he got the distance and uh, I see the bench down there right below us, they could hear you they were pretty fired up by your call too Slapped Ford out of the ruck by Goulburn Valley they're going to go Ford again, Pickard comes off half back with purpose but leaves it behind might have been getting into the back there was Ethan Taylor, umpire waves play on burrowing in there the Western Region defenders they can't hold it up and Underneath that goal, was Tuppen. Ball up. Sorry, Pep, that goal was really important too, just to stem the tide a bit and, uh, you know, give Golden Ooh. Valley a bit of breathing space. That's going to be a free kick there, Kane Pettifer. It's just yeah. within his, within his uh, kit bag? No, not quite within the repertoire. Testing the old hammy, 65 out. And that's beautiful a beautiful <laughs> pass there onto the chest of Brody Webster. And... Look, just left napping a little bit here, the Western mm. Region Football League. Just a dull little two and a half minutes of football. And then all of a sudden, the Goulburn Valley League are really hitting their straps in terms of their disposal efficiency. And we see now another set shot on goal generated here. Brody Webster, he's a sharp shooter as well. Five goals last week for Benella. He rolls in, he kicks it across the face. Big fly on the last line. Nick Knock Warnock almost takes the mark, but it goes through for a minor score. So that'll take it out to an even two goal lead to the Goulburn Valley League. So Shebeki with the kicking in duties. It was a dangerous one. It put Kennedy under the pump. Hand pass comes out to Moroni, who runs in and should have nailed it. And he's missed everything. The moment got the better of him. Guys, you've got a few of the Western Region Football League guys get starting to get rub downs during the second quarter. Nothing yet for the Goulburn Valley Football League. The weather may be a p take a big part in this game with that heat. Used to warm weather in Shepparton. It's another turnover <laughs> and it's going to come back inside 50 and Moroni's going to take the mark 45 out. He's just everywhere at the minute, isn't he? Nath Moroni just reading the situation beautifully on three separate occasions now Nath Moroni sprayed that one across the face there out of bounds on the full but uh, he probably should have finished that now the set shot opportunity he'll creep just over the dust of the 50 meter arc as he launches the right boot into it it won't be a goal it'll just be a score and it'll go through for a point and just further to Willow's point um, yeah, uh, the Western Region League have really had to chase a lot of tail early and work very hard to get back into the game so they've probably had to spend a few more petrol tickets than Golden Valley early on so Jordan Boyd takes the mark talked young Ethan Taylor out of it and then delivered nicely through the middle for Josh Mould who squares it over the to the far wing straight to Viojo Rainbow delivers up to half forward marks taken by McDonald he can wheel onto the left he checks the kick oh he was searching there for Declan Maloney they were standing still WRFL and now they can exit as well Goulburn Valley but only as far as Shebeki who marks and goes to Seawek and that's oh they've called play on Seawek gets away with it just that man again Maroney intercepts then runs into trouble Maybe unlucky not to get a free kick for high contact. Gives it over the top to Marnie. Now forward towards half four, but it's to no one in particular. Getting there first is Bucks. Under the pump there from Daniels. Sweeps a hand pass towards the wing, and they can escape. Edwards out wide again. McDonald might be next in the chamber. The uh, 
Bounce was unkind. It was a high tackle. The umpire claimed Dropping advantage, the and then it's going Goulburn Valley's way for holding the ball. Yeah, that's really good chase. Really good intensity there. And that stopped what would have been a meaningful entry. You would have thought there, but a shocking kick by Mitchie Brett has absolutely butchered that. And he has kicked that straight onto the chest of Timmy Jenkins, who chips it over the top. And Brank Tassiano. Brank Catazano. Brank Catazano. I will get it at some point in time, ladies and gentlemen. Stick with me yeah. <laughs> this there's afternoon. A, there's a few tongue twisters on both sides. Yep. Brank Catazano now rolls in. This would be really handy for the Western Region Footy League. And if it makes the distance, it's a goal. Don't worry about that. And they pay the ultimate price for a bit of a brain fade there. Mitchie Brett did all of the hard work to win the footy back there for the Goulburn Valley League. And just in the blink of an eye, it gives it straight back to them. And Bran Catazano is able to finish well for the Western Region well, Footy League. That was a bit similar to some of the uh, goals that the Western Region League have conceded at the other end. Just some, some brain fades, some lapses in concentration, and that's what you get in games like this where there's so many quality players. If you make a mistake, they're going to make you pay. Junker, Junker into the ruck, wins the tap, straight down the throat of Ryan and for the Goulburn Valley League. He kicks it that's up in inside the, the 50, that's and there's going to be a free. free kick going the way of Nick Warnock. Yeah, that's just unlucky. Probably a little bit sloppy from the defender there. He just tried to tackle and then fell into his back. And Warnock from outside 50 pumps it long, pumps it strong and misses near side. So it goes through for a minor score. So a little bit of a let off there for the Western Region Footy League. It's a pretty even contest now. 4-7 to 3-5. Similar scoring shots. I reckon that would have been the fourth goal that's resulted from free kicks. Also, if that one had gone through, it didn't. Yeah, Nick Fothergill, chip pass over the top now. Brett Marnie stops, props, touched off the boot there. The umpire heard it too. Around the corner, snap on goal here. Right in the goal square, big mark taken. And it looks as though that might be Gussie Byrne, is it? No, turning around, it's Webster who's taken the mark. Gussie Burns down here on the bench and he'll stroll in and just put it straight over the goal umpire's hat. And as simple as you like, Brody Webster kicks another one for the Goulburn Valley League and they now regain that little bit of a buffer that they got themselves uh, early on in this quarter. It's back out to a 13 point lead. Stats man, what do you got for us in the second quarter? Boy, it's really interesting. Mark's inside 50. The the Western Region Football League 7 to the Go Tave Golden Valley Football League 4 in this second quarter. Usually when you're winning that stat, you're winning on the scoreboard. Back in the middle, Junker and Norris in the ruck. They win the clearance though. The WRFL kick deep inside the 50. No one front and centre. Goulburn Valley have the numbers. Hand pass out wide to Mattingly at left half back. He ran out of space, then got knocked over. They've got numbers at the fall. Jordan Boyd tried to check the kick, but then missed Maloney on the way out. He's kicked it out of bounds on the full. It'll be a free kick to the visitors at left half back. They've just got contribution from everyone. I don't think you could really find a player from the Goulburn Valley League who hasn't had something to do with it so far. Now, Lockie Smith ignored Zach Keogh running through. The mark taken on the halfback flank now by Bradley Ryan, who goes up to Brad Whitford, the late inclusion. Middle of the ground, Matty Shannon. Careful little kick finds Mick Mattingly who's usually a really good user of the football. He's the bloke that you want with his hands on it, going inside 50. He kicks it into the forward pocket there. Matty Shannon there once again, and that's going to be a free kick. Poor discipline again there, Western Region Football League. And Nick Warnock is going to get the free kick. It's his second free kick this quarter. One for in the back, one there for being held whilst not in possession. And he'll have a shot from 45 out. This time a tough, tough angle. It's a long, high drop punt. Is it going to go all the way up to the goal square? The ball's still alive there. Hits the deck. Brody Webster around the corner now. Off one step around the body misses. And Brad Whitford unable to finish. 
for the Golden Valley League goes through for a minor. One thing you notice about this Golden Valley team, they've got a lot of long kicks. You know, guys outside the 50, they're not, not shy in having a, having a go and they're not missing by much either. Nick Bucks takes the mark in the right back pocket. He's got Seawek on short if he wants to use him and he does. So it's a bit of a stunted movement at the moment. Oh, that's a poor kick. Picard only just stole it from the clutches of Fothergill. He's going to go backwards again. Again under the pump, here's Bucks. Poised under pressure, delivers nicely for Nielsen, who wants to play on, and they've turned it over again. Here's an opportunity. Mattingly gives it over the top. High ball to the goal square. Pettifer's well set. He doesn't fly it. It falls to the foot of the pack. They've got to finish this. And the snap from Warnock misses oh, too. Well, another opportunity goes begging. Three behinds for Nick Warnock. It's 5-9 to 3-5. The visitors are up by 16. It could be more. It should be more. Well, they've really taken control in the last five or six minutes, Golden Valley, and they've had two guild edge chances. Both similar snaps around the body. Both should have been goals. And uh, nearing half time, they're the sort of chances that you could lift a root. Yeah, they, they can be. But just that over-possessing mm. for the Western Region Football League. I mean, your skills just have to be innate. They really need to be so good to be able to play that style of football. And even just at the level underneath AFL, which is almost where this is really, in terms of the quality of the game. Now, Nick Fothergill up to full forward, and that's another free kick inside yeah. 50 to the Golden Valley League, which results from, well, arguably sloppy defence. Yeah. Shepard, I think it was. Yeah, it was. Call. And uh, Kyle Mueller, who's already got one this term, who is white hot form. This kid has just come along in leaps and bounds with his football. He's right up to this and he slams it through for the GV. And there's another one for the side in the purple jumper. And they move on now to a match high lead of 6.945 as we approach half time here at the Avalon Airport. Werribee Football Ground, 3-5-23. That's a 22-point margin for the Golden Valley League. Great finish, Mueller. And this is playing out similar to the under-18s game in that the Western Region Football League are getting into trouble with the way they're coming out of defence. They're trying to go short with their kick-ins and, and play on. And as you say, Jason, your skills have got to be spot on when you do that. Otherwise, you can come undone. And they've come undone a few times and given up goals, uh, both in the under-18s and both now in the seniors. Back in the middle, jo Norris wins it down. It spills out to Mattingly on the wing. Ducks and weaves under a couple of tackles. Kicks up towards half forward. Nielsen's got to get a fist in there on uh, Fothergill, and he does. But it's going to come back. Hand pass releases, Brett kicks deep inside the 50. At the back, Picard got a hand in there for the WRFL. Toe poke out to Ferrari, happy to see it out. It'll be thrown in 15 metres out in the left forward pocket to the city end, 22 point lead to the Golden Valley Footy League. So they wouldn't want to cough up another one here. Really got to try and Retain the Golden Valley League. It's going to be difficult from this stoppage situation now. Mueller ducks his head. He caught one high. Yeah. But the umpire said he ducked into it. And I think he, he took a couple on as well. And there's a bit on behind play here. They want to be careful, WRFL. They don't want to give away a, sh a free kick here and have another shot on goal. I think there's a 50 being paid, though. Yeah, there is. Just a little bit of uh, contact that was yeah. unnecessary. Given the troubles they've had from the kick-ins, it's probably a blessing that they've got a, free, got a 50 metre penalty. So out to the half-forward flank now. Cut off by Boyd. Handball a little sloppy over the top. And... Harry Boyd handballed it to Jordan Boyd. It was a poor kick from Picard. He put it straight in between Boyd and uh, Hamad and ne to ne neither's advantage. So fisted out there by Boyd in the right contest. Next goal here is really big either way. If it goes to the GVFL, they've got a, a very good break. Goes to the WRFL, they're still in with a real sniff close to half time. Neither very, side very is going to get to <laughs> <laughs> right on the knocker 
as a matter of fact, as that siren does sound the major change here. 6 9 45 at his goal in Valley League over the Western Region Footy League. 3 5 23. A really exciting first half of football boundary as. Uh, not working at the moment anyway. I know. No, that we've got him. All right, Andrew Panay. Out with uh, a left, uh, right hamstring and a little bit of a left groin as well, so he won't take any further part today. Bit of a double whammy. That's no good for the Western Region Football League. A man down and a man who's very capable of turning a match. We know he did in 2016 against the Ballarat Football League. Yeah, that's, that's superb back then. So that's a huge blow for the home side. It is. It's a 22-point margin here. And the first, second half is now underway with the first half now well and truly behind us. The Goulburn Valley League through Pettifer. Links up with Mick Mattingly, two Kyabram teammates here. Back in board to Nick Fothergill, who was pretty good in that first half. I don't really think you could say any player in particular was no good for the Golden Valley League. Now Warnock led at the ball, tried to mark, couldn't quite. He has some company there. Fothergill there to help him out, though, by hand to Mattingly. Back to Warnock. Warnock back now to uh, Tommy Priest. Ball back in the middle of the ground. Now Lockie Smith. A switch little kick out to Teddy Linden on the halfback flank, and they just can't get their hands on the footy at the moment, the Western Region Footy League. Brett Marnie now has the footy on the centre wing. All the numbers back for the Western Region Football League inside the... Defensive half, big fly over the top and a massive hanger taken. And what a mark that was. Kane Pettifer winds the clock back right there and takes a little bit of a ride, if you don't mind. It's moments like that where we wish we don't have, well, we're disappointed we don't have the instant replay on the screen. That was something else. Yeah, it certainly was. As Kane Pettifer just had the sit and rode the shoulders of his Western Region Football League opponent. He's already got one for the game, Kane Pettifer. Can he make it two? He rolls in just inside 50. It's a really thumping, penetrating kick. It does make the distance, but only just. And it goes through for a minor score. So the Goulburn Valley League start off the quarter in pretty dominant fashion. Unfortunately, they weren't able to top it off with a goal. And the Western Region Footy League have it on the half-back flank. So they've worked it all the way out to the wing in the searching for Hodgson there, but it's chopped off it again, and Goulburn Valley have possession. And a big switch of play out in the Mattingly direction. So they're finding all the space at the moment, Goulburn Valley. They dart in board. A short little ball finds uh, Keo. He kicks up towards half-forward in the direction of Fothergill. Can't beat it to the boundary. Picard keeps it in, but apparently stepped over the line. According to the boundary umpire, Picard has a word to him, but it's not forthcoming. Boundary throw in, right half forward for Goulburn Valley. They're up by 23. It's a result on a knife's edge at the moment. Next goal so crucial. Yeah, look, it certainly is. Pushing it out to that 29-point margin would make it really difficult, particularly a rotation down now. The Western Region Footy League, it certainly doesn't help their cause, stats man. No, it doesn't. But although it's not a hot day, though, either. It's pretty cool conditions. Yeah, rotation numbers haven't been that high, but by the sounds of it, that Panai is a very important player for them. So I thought he was one of their better players going to half-time too, Jason, to be honest. Yeah, Joshy McDonald slammed to the deck in almost a sling-like tackle. You do have to be careful with those. Punch back out now, and a good kick there from Newton. Up to half forward, but although Holman was underneath it, it slipped through his hands. Picked up there by Brett to Linden. Back now to Ryan, whose kick is a beauty. Over to Gus Byrne, who now runs and carries. Kicks it up to centre half forward on a big lead there. Webster takes the mark. Turns around as he wheel and go. Yes, he does. Up to full forward. Mueller underneath it. Couldn't quite take the mark. Falls to the ground. Picked up around the body. Nick knock, war knock, bang. There's another one for the Goulburn Valley League. And one of the best bits of play from coast to coast on the afternoon, the Goulburn Valley League kick away here. And they now lead by 29 points, four and a half gone in the third term. 
Well, he's had a couple of shots on goal this afternoon, Nick Warnock. In fact, we talk about it at half-time. He kicked three behinds to half-time. He deserved that goal, though. Great goal by Nick Warnock. What I will say is that Mueller did brilliantly there because he had the opportunity to gather the ball and snap it, but he knew he would have been tackled had he gained possession. So he just put a little toe poke on it out to Warnock, who finished the job. So unselfish play from Mueller. And they're in a good spot now, Goulburn Valley. 29 points up as we go back into the middle. Five minutes gone, third term. 7-10 to 3-5. They win the tap. The Dogs sharked out of the middle there by Marnie. Did brilliantly. Kicks inside the 50. Nielsen floating back. Almost took the mark. It wasn't paid. Coming up with it was Mueller. He throws it out of the boot. He hit the fat part of the footy. It's a high up and under. Almost a mark underneath there to Webster. Socket off the ground. Mueller's an opportunity again. It comes out, though, to Edwards for the Western Region Football League, who goes inboard for Bucks, who can get on his bike. He kicks out in the direction of Jojo Rainbow, who glides in, couldn't quite take the mark, regathers the footy, goes back to Bucks, has to be poised and is through the middle. Can they use the overlap? Prismal, the captain, hasn't been as busy as he would have liked. Seawek marks too far out to score. Could have given it to Brand Catazano running by. Oh, he's kicked it straight into the man on the mark. Poor choice. And now Goulburn Valley going the other so way. So Mick Mattingly over to Gussie Byrne, who's little... They've got the, the side of the boot syndrome at the moment. Both of these sides. Poor kick, but it's going to work out OK now. Marnie sticks his head over the pill. He can't quite extricate it, though. Western Region Footy League work back the other way now through Shebeki. And he hits the deck. And the umpire... Picks up the Sharon and will ball it up. True centre half forward position. 29 gone in the third term. Kicked out of uh, midair there by the big fella in Maloney. Gets about 25 metre advantage. It was cut off by Tommy Priest, who had the ball taken away from him. Now good work by Brian Catizzano, who goes up to full forward. Nice kick over Linden's head. Picked up there now by Lockie Smith, who does really well. Have a look at the kick too. Mick Mattingly there. His Kyabram teammate takes the mark. Now he spears it onto the chest there of uh, his teammate at the half back there, who was... Uh, I've paid the Paddy mark. Marks, sorry, who's been a little bit quiet this afternoon, Paddy Marks. Now to Webster. Webster long inside 50. Terrible kick. And easy defensive mark there taken by Kelly Pickard. Pickard wants to switch the play. It wasn't his greatest kick. Put Wet Edwards under the pump. Has to step around. Pettifer. Pettifer got him. And he's gone too, says the umpire, holding Ooh. the ball. Well done by Goulburn Valley. Kane Pettifer in particular. The kick for Edwards wasn't great by Pickard. And it cost them again. They're in, stri they're in strife here the WRFL they're just looking a bit flat footed a bit tired header for short for Shannon who Gold marks Golden Valley get a goal or two here and they could really break this game open the last five of the six goals of the match are gone to the Golden Valley Football League folks so dominant period here seven minutes into this third term and Matt Shannon a set shot opportunity will put it out to a 35 point lead he launches into the share and it's a long kick it's going to go all the way a pack flies Hands touch, ball hit hits post, is behind. Yeah, this is a, a worrying period for the WRFL. They've got to hang tough and then try and manufacture some goals from somewhere. Another dangerous kick in from Shebeki, put Boyd under the pump and then Edwards again had to deal with it. Yeah. Happy to see it out in the end, so that's been stoppage at the 50 again. That's been a recurring problem too, just continually getting into trouble from the kick-ins and trying to get it out of their defensive 50. Maloney, Pettifer went up with two hands, grabbed it, and I'm not sure... Free kick, WRFL, Maloney. Okay, so it's come out to Bucks. Spearing ball, down low, Mould takes the mark. Defensive side of the outer wing. Kicks underneath the scoreboard, up towards half forward. Jumping up and unable to mark there was Tuppen. It's off hands, they've got numbers out the back. They've got to be clean here. Goulburn Valley, they weren't clean enough. Jenkins comes up with it. Hand pass over the top. Was searching there for Prismal, but he's chopped it up as well. A dinking little kick inside 50. Seawek lowers the eyes. Searching out wide there. Couldn't quite hit the target. Jordan Boyd comes in. That socket directly in the boundary. And deliberate, says the umpire. Probably the right call. Yeah, it's nice. always different adjudications in different leagues, and you're not sure what you're going to get on these days, but it, it was nice. probably deliberate. He had eyes for nothing 
else, he might have used the foot, but he was only looking one place. Boyd now with the footy for the WRFL, and Lachlan Smith eats those for breakfast. Beautiful intercept mark, and a little chip out wide to Teddy Linden now in the back pocket for the Golden Valley League. So a lot of hard work for their forward entries, the Western Region Footy League at the minute. And then they're really not capitalising on any sort of foray that they make into an attacking area. As Mitch Brett now has the footy. He switches, middle of the ground. Warnock couldn't quite take the mark. Hits the deck, picked up there by Boyd. He was tackled. Umpire said, give it to me. Ball up, true centre wing position. Ten minutes gone into the third term here and it's an even five goal lead to the Golden Valley League. So Norris and Maloney in the ruck. Maloney wins it down. Kennedy gets the clearance, but it wasn't that effective. It's back into the congestion. Diving in his Jenkins, he's wrapped up. Ball up. 7-11-53 to 3-5-23. Do you like Slurpees? 7-11? Yeah, they're all right. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not on a day like today. It's a little though. cold up here <laughs> in the sun. Nielsen knocks it down to Mould. Hand pass missed Picker, but he's got space to go regather. Hand pass for Boyd. It's got to be quick. It was quick enough. Out to Bucks, and then they retreat to Shebeki. Back to Bucks through the middle. Finds a bit of space. Wheels onto the right boot. It's all Golden Valley at half forward, and they can mop up. Easy as you like, and then I'll share it out wide nicely with Daniels, who marks it right half back. He's just starting to own that back half now. Is Lockie Smith just reads it so beautifully, and then each disposal is effective. And he gets it to Jamison Daniels, back to Maddie Shannon. Shannon now to Teddy Linden at full back. He's also able to go back again if he likes. This time to Brad Ryan, whose kick ends up back with Lockie Smith. And they're just playing some tempo footy here of the Golden Valley League. Oh, I don't know if that was the right option to Holman. He had three to beat. Did well in the end. Second effort was good. Got it going forward. Now Maroney over the football. Lost it. Comes inside 50 for the WRFL. And a mark taken. And much, much needed. As it's going to be a tough... Opportunity to convert, but Junker has the kick from a pretty tough little pocket here. And he looks as though he's going to go the banana as his preferred avenue to goal around the corner. Screws it around nowhere near enough. And that is going out of bounds on the full. So a resultant free kick will go to Big Teddy Linden. So Linden uses it by hand and then they're under pressure quickly. Kennedy might be the beneficiary at right half forward. It still spills out though to Whitford. The inclusion couldn't quite get rid of it quickly enough. Couple of little hand passes. A high ball there from uh, Smith towards the wing. And then Daniel Nielsen happy to oblige and escort it over the boundary line. Centre wing on the outer side at Avalon Airport Oval. Pepe Cavalieri, Cade Lucas, Andrew Wilson joined in commentary by Jason Walsh and Mark Owen. You're listening on Win FM, One FM and Seymour FM. So the ball is contested. The centre wing, far side of the ground, 12 and a half. Almost 13 minutes gone now. Still an even five goal lead to the Goulburn Valley League. They need to start hitting the scoreboard here. And they can only do that by winning some clearances. And Bucks does exactly that out to McDonald, who spears the pass onto the chest of Oscar Junker, whose last set shot opportunity was a really low percentage kick from almost the car park. Wasn't able to get the required bend on it, and it went out of bounds on the full. So he'll now have a more traditional set shot and will need to travel about 45 metres with the kick. He's taken the Dennis Lilly run up. He's uh, well outside the 50. A little bit of a breeze now kicking in. I wonder how much of a factor that is. We'll try and get down to our boundary rider shortly if that's technically possible at uh, some point in time. As uh, our man down there, Andrew Wilson, is up and about there somewhere. We'll try and uh, see if he's still with us, uh, Willow. Yeah, and the uh, breeze isn't really much effect out here this afternoon. It's still slightly just blowing 
towards the benches, but very, very slight. So only a gentle little Zephyr there. As uh, dispossessed was uh, Prismal, who dropped it. Now it's picked up by his teammate who goes over the top there, Maloney, skidding. Not quite able to take the mark, though, is Bran Catizano. Now off the halfback flank, Tommy Priest gets a kick away. He'll find touch and will have a boundary throw in. 14 and a half gone in the third term. It's a 29-point lead to the Goulburn Valley League. You just feel like the WRFL have upped their intensity a little bit the last few minutes. If they're going to have a chance in the last quarter, they must put it on the scoreboard now. And they might have an opportunity. It comes out to Jenkins, who with the outside of the boot puts it up to full forward. McDonald might oblige here. He likes these moments, throws it onto the boot, dropped it, pinged for it. Illegitimate disposal, said the umpire. Just Braden Ferrari was a bit stiff there. Might have caught one over the shoulder for mine. And now Golden Valley are away. They certainly are. And Webster with the springs in his legs. He's got such a good vertical. Takes the mark, then gets it to Marnie. Now over to Keo. Keo shovels a handball. Back out wide now. Around the body. Webster goes up to Warnock, who takes the mark again. And he's been sensational. He loves interleague footy. Does this like Nicky Warnock? And a tough shot on goal. But if anyone out there, in terms of forwards, is capable of converting from places like this, it's Nick Warnock. Don't worry about that. 25-year-old from Benella who slams the kick and pulls it just to the left. So it goes through for a minor score. And it's back out to an even five-goal margin here, the way of the Goulburn Valley. Right where... The WRFL don't like it. Deep in defence. They found it tricky to extricate themselves in these positions all afternoon. Can't afford to do something silly now. Shebeki straight down the gut, searching for Edwards again. Puts him under the pump. They've got numbers on the outer here. Hand pass releases a teammate into the pocket and the mark's taken by Shannon. What did I just say? <laughs> yeah, well, you were dead right and it's uh, something that... You know, Kay referred to earlier on as well in terms of their inability to move the ball efficiently outside of their back half. They've had no real fluency other than maybe two separate occasions for the game. And it's just turnover after turnover. Now, Matty Shannon rolls in. He pushes across the face. Warnock there again. Can't take the mark. Touched. Goes over the line boundary. Throwing deep side. Yeah. Attacking 50 for the Golden Valley League. Five it's, just goal cost lead. Them, it's just cost them time after time, and it was the same in the under 18s, too. Uh, you know, it's it's nice to be able to play out that way, but you've got to be able to execute the skill, and, and they haven't been able to. At the throw in, Brand Catasano hand passed it blindly into a dangerous spot, but Edwards was there waiting. He hand passes out wide for Jordan Boyd, who takes a bounce in the right back pocket, kicks in the Seawork direction. He's got a couple to beat, but the pass was glorious, right in between two Golden Valley defenders. He squares it up, Ooh. searching for Brand Catizano. Pettifer came late with a fist, but Fabian hung on. Yeah, strong mark there. He lays into the leather and squares it out wide to Viojo Rainbow, who what? He has to get on his bike. He kicks long and penetrating to McDonald, who wants to move it on quickly. He does, wobbles a kick, and a oh. meaningful fist comes late from Tom Holman. Diving horizontally, kills it. Out of play. Uh, further to that point I was making before about uh, WRFL messing it up, coming out of defence, and we saw an example of it just there. The tackling pressure of Golden Valley all around the ground, not just in defence, but we saw it there in the forward line, has been really strong as well. All day. So we'll restart play with a boundary throw in inside, attacking 50 for the Western Region Footy League. Neat little pass out wide, should find a target, it does. So Timmy Jenkins went short, out to Grundy, who puts it onto the chest of Braden Ferrari. As a matter of fact, the kick came from Edwards, and Ferrari will have a shot from, uh, well, a really tight angle, and so far today, I reckon we haven't seen a goal kick from any sort of significant angle anywhere in the under-18s or in the seniors. So most goals have been scored from running shots or set shots almost directly in front. Is this the exception to the rule? It is. And it was much, much needed. 
And Braden Ferrari gets it back to a 24 point deficit and maybe just maybe something that's manageable, something that provides a little bit of spark and inspiration for the Western Region Football League. They much, much needed that one. So we're back now to a 26 point ball, a 24 point ball game rather. It is uh, 20 minutes gone in the third term. Well, there's plenty of time left for them and they've uh if they can just string a couple together, that's what they've struggled to get all day, is to be able to get multiple goals in a row. If they can do that, put a bit of pressure on, things can change quickly. Maloney and Boyd in the ruck. It was roved there by Daniels for Goulburn Valley. He lost the footy, though. Numbers with Goulburn Valley still at the four. Well done there by uh, Marnie. The vice-captain gets a kick. Sh uh, Shannon, Matt Shannon ducked under the tackle and then kicked inside the 50, searching for Webster. Gathers at the 50. Kicks a high ball to centre half for Jenkins underneath it. Oh, but flying over the top was that man again, Nick Warnock. With one goal, four to his name. Can he finally oblige and get the instant answer for Goulburn Valley? They've been good at doing that all day. Whenever the Western Region have answered, posed a question, they have answered. And Warnock wobbles one from a long way out. It was never making the journey. Nielsen camped underneath and he takes the mark for the WRFL. So Nielsen goes out wide to the back pocket and Viojo Rainbow has it. His kick's poor though. And now the Golden Valley League can pump it long inside 50. A really lethal looking kick there in the direction of Kane Pettifer who gets the thighs pumping as he chases the footy out towards the boundary line. Picked up good work there, Shebeki. In tight, heavy, heavy traffic here. They clear it out somehow, the Western Region footy lead, but only as far as Big Daddy Linden, who takes a fantastic defensive mark. He's been good too, Linden. You said he was a swing man. They, he can throw, they can throw him forward as well. Yeah, he can play pretty much anywhere. Big fly there came from Webster, front position. Couldn't quite drag the footy into his chest, though. Second effort, really good there. Had his head over it. And the WRFL happy enough to see it over the line for a boundary throw-in. We're going late now into the third term here where it's a four-goal lead to the Goulburn Valley. They'd really love one to get it back out to five goals before the final term. Matty Shannon off one step, high up and under. Andrew Narco was charging at it. He couldn't take the mark. Cut off there. Brave mark too. Tuppen back with the flight. He took it for the WRFL. Then he kicks it out to a little bit of space. He was intending for Kennedy, but it was picked up there by Paddy Marks, who went back to Brett Marnie. Spears at the centre half forward. Now Keo with an opportunity. Gives off the old Dustin Martin. Don't argue. Picked up now by Brett. Brett back to Boyd. Boyd out wide. And Pettifer read the situation better than any. And he takes the mark now and will shoot from what is his maximum range here. It'll be from outside 50. There's a slight breeze, so he elects to go short. And he finds a teammate there who improves the percentage of the kick here by squaring it up a little more and lessening the angle and also lessening the distance required and Mick Mattingly also definitely has this journey. He might want to start it out to the left goal post here is what I'm predicting. So he rolls in, he kicks it, left goal post, and if that makes the distance, that, ladies and gentlemen, That's is touched on the line. Must have only just been touched. It's a beautiful looking kick. Yeah. He was celebrating and uh, they managed to touch it right on the line, the Western uh, Region Football League. Yeah, no reviews here. So, Shebeki just has to. It's a better kick in this time, but they don't get another chance to go forward the WRFL, and they've got some work to do in the last quarter if they're to come from behind and take a victory. 4 6 30, the home side trailing the Goulburn Valley Football League. 7 13 55. And he's got some spare beds. Excellent. That more. Up our of course, alley. we're talking King Island. Yes, of course, and uh, we might have to go a little bit closer to summer, I think, because yes, it does so. get a little bit chilly and windy down there. And they have a great pie too, King Island. Yes, they certainly do. They have a crayfish pie 
down there, as a matter of fact, which yeah, is uh, something a little bit different. Gee, I'm not that keen. I'm a moccasin boy, Jase. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you've got $15, you can get one from their local bakery as well. So the Western Region Football League have gone straight inside 50, but as usual, it's been repelled with ease by a Golden Valley out towards the interchange wing, right underneath our broadcast position at Avalon Airport Oval. And I think the ball found its way out, but the umpires uh, let it go. Now it does. It'll be thrown in right in front of Goldman Valley's interchange bench. Really impressed with Sam Keo. It's actually the first time I've ever been able to see him play in the flesh. We He didn't play in the round one game against Benalla uh, for Seymour. But I'll tell you what, he is some sort of a player, the number 14 for the Goldman Valley League, Pep. He certainly is, as uh, we'll play will continue on there, Viojo Rainbow. Had the footy and he looped out a handball there to Siwek, who's missed his target. And again, it's just the uh, go-go gadget arms of Brad Ryan and Tommy Holman down back there that make it really hard work for the WRFL forwards. They've had no love all day. The delivery inside hasn't been fantastic either, except for probably two really nice kicks that came in, particularly in that first quarter. Play goes on here. Juggling the mark there. Andronaco got his head taken off. Ultimate Warrior versus King Kong Bundy. WrestleMania 5. <laughs> Brings back a little bit of memory. As Andronaco. Beautiful pass into Pettifer. What's Pettifer got? Further afield there. He sees something that he likes, so he just backs off on the kick. Gets it to Mick Matting Lee. Over the top there. Beautiful pass. And the mark taken there by Paddy Marks, who's feeling as though he might be within range here, boys. Well, he might as well. A few of his teammates have had some long shots on goal and have been pretty successful, so why not? And Paddy Marks has swung forward, Jason, started in the back line. Yeah, or maybe just an attacking sort of half-back sort of a role as he launches in from outside 50. I'll tell you what, distance not an issue. Neither's accuracy! And Paddy Marks kicks one of the goals of the afternoon from deep, deep, deep downtown. That is a beautiful kick. Travel all of 55 metres and it almost matches Nathan Moroni's bomb from earlier on today. But that there may very well just be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Unfortunately, they'd need something yes. pretty special from here. 31 points now, 8-13-61. Uh, 31 point lead to the GBL. We'll get down to the boundary, please, Willow. Struggling to get Willow, I think. Yeah, we certainly are, which is very unfortunate. We've had no luck technically with our boundary rider this afternoon. Careful not to give yourself an electric shock over there. Peppy, you can just give me the signal when we're... Bit of a nothing play here. Halfback flank mark taken. Now Brett Marnie with the footy. This is back to Linden who pumps it long. Penetrating kick. Good mark taken there though by Dan Nielsen for the WRFL. Now he goes to... Bryden Hodgson, who played on quickly, got the handball off to Siwek now, out to the pocket. But guess who? Teddy Linden's there to munch it up. And maybe, yeah, maybe before he has this kick, we can go down to Willow again. No? All right, let's watch Teddy Linden take the kick. All right, we're getting no love <laughs> for our boundary rider. He went short to Shannon, now to Lockie Smith. So Smith now with the foot on the halfback flank for the Golden Valley League. They're going to be happy enough just soaking up the time here. Oh, big fly over the back there. Webster told you he could take a hanger. He wasn't quite able to hang on to it, though. Kick now off one step back inside 50. Cut off at centre half back there. And the switch pass just touched a fingernail. Ryan rode the bump and got rid of the footy. Pettifer doing some handy work, although it's outside the dust of the boundary here. So there'll be a boundary throw in in front of the really beautiful grandstand facility here at uh, Avalon Airport Oval, the Werribee VFL ground. I'm sure there's a good story behind that as well. As the kick comes inside 50 there from Cywek. Gee, 
the delivery inside 50 hasn't done their forwards any favour. I mean, they've lacked a big target up there, but the delivery's been poor. It certainly has. Now an opportunity for the Western Region Football League. Another sort of hurried kick up to full forward. But, I mean, full credit to the back six of the Golden Valley League. They have seriously been unbelievable this afternoon. Just defence after defence and then their ability to intercept Mark as well. Some of the big goal kickers in the WRFL, for whatever reason, are not playing. Uh, you know, guys like Jace Perkins and Paddy Rose, who was the leading goal kicker last year, has a poor start to this season, though. So, yeah, they have lacked a, a real spearhead up there today. Yeah, you've only got one in your top ten uh, yeah. currently playing out there on the park. So Goal kicker-wise, yeah, that, that is. That was one of our concerns sort of coming into today for you guys, like who was actually going to kick your goals without knowing a great deal, obviously, about all of the players. There's a lot of, a lot of guys like Panay and Brian Catasano can kick goals, but they're sort of medium forwards. They're not big target men. Yep. So a chain of handballs here, and it's a loose footy now inside 50 for the Western Region Footy League. An opportunity for them now came through Junker. Junker got it off to his teammate there who has a shy at the stumps. And it goes across the face. Gareth Newton unable to kick the goal, so it will go through for a minor score. But why do you reckon that is uh, that, that, that oh. just... What, unavailable? Yeah, other there's things some, to do? some issues with uh, particular clubs, I suppose, that don't really need to be gone into. But yeah, okay, it is, fair it is you know, difficult in some cases to get players for these type of games. Yeah, worried about their key players getting injured and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, for interleague, they're after. Well, we mentioned at the start, Deer Park um, don't have a player in this team, but in reality, you'd have at least half a dozen, probably, mm. um, minimum, I would say. And they've got a number of really good goal kickers who have been heavy goal scorers early in the season. Jace Perkins has won. Jack Redpath, the former Western Bulldogs, playing with them at the moment. Um, and he's Jayden, not playing. Jaden Post from Altona has been playing up forward. Yeah, he's a good swing man. Some news from down on the boundary line though. Now Nick Fothergill's got his ankle iced so he's probably unlikely to take any further yeah. part in the game, but the game's all, almost, almost over, you'd think. And another, and another behind. behind for the WRFL. So they're peppering, but... They are. Ladies and gentlemen, just a quick announcement. We're looking for the owner of Black Hyundai Tucson. 1NI5ME. Can you please move your car quickly? Thank you. You heard the man. Move your car. That old Boundary chest. throw in at left half forward that for the WRFL. That old chest. At least they haven't left their lights on. Well, inside 50 zones for the final quarter, the Western Region Football League 7 to the Go Tape Golden Valley Football League 1. But guess who's got the one goal for the quarter, boys? Yeah. Go Tape Golden Valley Football League. I think the, the sting's gone out of this a bit now. So Marnie for Goulburn Valley gets the football, kicks it down the wing. Unable to pick the footy up, where's the big man there for Goulburn Valley. But at the fall there was Mueller, who's been terrific. Kicks up towards half forward. At the back, Prismal, the captain. Picard left his man from full back and did it nicely. Lays it off to Taylor. And now towards uh, Prismal again and Bucks, who tries to thread the needle up towards half forward. Spoil came from the back, front and centre Boyd gives it to Taylor and now running through the middle Hodgson, here's an opportunity, got to draw the man, Kennedy must finish, 45 out on the run, Steve Kennedy delivers, no it's hit the post and so did uh, Lockie Smith going back with the flight to kill it as well so yeah. that was quite something and that was the moment I think. Could very well have been the moment, just needed to finish there. They built up so well to create that opportunity. But you just wonder now, Red Path and Post, both inside 50, what a different outfit the Western Region Football League would have been this afternoon. Yeah. That would have been a daunting proposition for the Golden Valley League defenders to former AFL players. We've still been a very, it's still been a very competitive uh, performance. We're it not has. Talk, we're not talking about a smashing like no. some of the uh, some of the games Previous. in recent years have been. But yeah, probably they would be disappointed not to be a bit closer. Mind you, they might have a shot here. Well, here's another opportunity here. This one across the face, they're generating plenty of chances here. But it's their fifth behind for the quarter, Jason. Yeah, I, I Western think, Region Football League. That is. Yeah, I, I think what happens too, and in a situation like this, and it's just throw caution into the wind sometimes you chase it that little bit too hard you're really actually forcing it yeah and they're just squeezing the kicks and across the face of goal well done Lockie Smith there 
Got it to Holman, who paddled it forward. Now, Tommy Priest was working hard in there, as was Maddie Shannon, who now pulls the footy out. But the umpire comes in as he's got the company of Brand Catazano there. You could just see it happening. Golden Valley going down the other end and getting a goal against the run of play. That often happens when there's you know, repeat injuries, repeat you know, points. The opposition just get a quick break and, and kick a goal. So it's a 26 point margin the way of the Golden Valley League as time ticks away in this final term here. Such an important game for both of these leagues so far. It's the Golden Valley League who getting it all their way. Marnie links up with Mattingly. It's almost dream team like stuff here for the Golden Valley. As now Brody Webster. And as a call, I'm telling you right now, you enjoy that. Mick Mattingly to Brett Marnie. They are two class players. Yeah. And to just lace it out to Brody Webster, who's been sensational this afternoon. Gee, he's been a real live wire for the GV. And what did we just say? You, you know, WRFL works so hard, have so many half chances at goal. Go straight back up the, up the other end, clean ball movement. Now this should be a goal for Golden Valley. So this would just about bury any hopes that were left of the Western Region Football League. And Brody Webster puts a bit of an exclamation mark on it for the Golden Valley League as they kick away here now and they push it out to, and the stats man will help me with this, I reckon, a match high lead, 31 points here now, the Golden Valley League, and that may very well be the heartbreaker for the Western Region oh. Football League here this afternoon. It's actually 32 points match high, yeah. Jason. I think very much the heartbreaker, Jason. The Western Region League worked so hard at the other end, had so many shots, and you could just see what was going to happen, and it did happen. Golden Valley go down, get a quick goal. This could go out now. Back in the middle, Dan wins the clearance and opportunity, but it's exited through. Taylor gives it to Picard, delivers out wide to the advantage, but a little bit too wide for Nick Bucks. It's out of bounds on the full. I reckon he's been a try. A very good player, Nick Bucks. He's on Werribee's VFL list. Come on in leaps and bounds. Priest. Short to Whitford. Is he any relation to Star? Star Bucks? Star Bucks. No. God. <laughs> it's all right. It's almost three o'clock. We'll be rid of him That's soon. <laughs> the sting's really out of it now, isn't it? Keo inside the 50. Almost a mark. They should be able to exit here. Viojo Rainbow overran it. He gets another opportunity. Gives it to Nielsen. Shares it out wide with Hamad, who has the pace to get there. Not quite. J just important the WRFL hang tough here. They don't want to let this game blow out. They have been very competitive in general play. You know, it's about five goals at the moment. They want to keep the margin under this. I agree, Kate. It, it would be, you know, poorly reflective of their effort on the afternoon and, mm. you know, ultimately all that anyone's going to remember, you know, six months down yeah. the track is how hard they got pummeled if they do let it get to that stage. But there's still some blokes out there really trying for the Western Region Footy League, which is great to see, that were prepared to put on the jumper that were prepared to come out here and play for their competition this afternoon, that weren't just worried about themselves, that were worried about the pride of the competition. It's fantastic it's to see. It sounds like you should be coaching, Jase. Don't start me. <laughs> Half forward flank now, good mark taken. Ferrari. He's... Uh, Good game this afternoon, Ferrari, but uh, not a great deal of opportunity for him. As he'll roll in, has he got the journey in his leg, Pepe? He'll kick you from just outside would. 50. Okay. Well, you've just given him the benefit of the doubt, and he has honoured that, and it's just gone through for a minor score. Distance certainly wasn't the issue, though. Now, Teddy Linden. Just a little neat pitching wedge over to Paddy Marks. Goes out to now Mitch Brett. Takes a good mark, juggling mark. Short pass to Boyd, who has it now on the halfback flank for the Golden Valley League. 
Tumbling kick straight to Jenkins at right half forward. Tries to get it away. Might have been pushed in the back. Umpire waves play on. It's gathered by Marks. Hook kick around the boundary line. Didn't catch all of it, but it landed in the lap of Smith. Works out okay. Chisels the ball to centre half back and spots up his teammate in Priest. Through the middle to Kino. Had the hand pass running by. Opted to go a little end. Shared by hand to Daniels. Who kicks a deep entry inside 50. Pettifer from the back. Robes his own pack. Curls and goals. It is a wonderful goal from Kane Pettifer. And it puts the icing on the cake for Goulburn Valley. And, and wonderful from Kane Pettifer. And Kelly Pickard has uh, put his arms out, stretched at the umpire, saying, how about the mark? And uh, I've got to say, to the naked eye, he looks pretty stiff. I thought he had purchase on that. But uh, Kane Pettifer, as, he, as is his want, he made the most of the opportunity. Never going to miss one like that, but a pretty tough call there on Kelly Pickard. Yeah, usually they pay man in front there. So fair call, I think, Kay, but uh, perhaps just not the required amount of time in the umpire's eyes hit mm. the deck but yeah. then came Pettifer's ability to get it from you know, under his knees there and just around the body shows you the class act well, How it often is. do we see it in the Go Tape Golden Valley Football League Kane Pettifer roving his own football and kicking a goal? Well, we might just see it again as uh, Jamison Daniels pumps on inside 50 and now another free kick here and against Jordan Boyd I think and it's yeah. going the way of Mueller Oh dear, and that's just... This is just what they didn't want. Some cheap goals late in the margin is uh, is blowing out. It is starting to really get ugly now. As Mueller rolls in 20 metres out. Should make no mistake. He's a beautiful kick at the Sharon. He makes the goal umpire do some work. But it's okay. He kicks his second of the afternoon. And Kyle Mueller has 15 in three weeks two of those interleague goals and really important ones for the Goulburn Valley League out to 43 points now for the Goulburn Valley League 17 and a half gone final term yeah well they haven't been long quarters uh, the previous one was only about 23 minutes they've so. averaged 25 today the quarters yeah so we've probably got you know another seven or eight minutes really important the WRFL can get a goal or two back here because I do think the uh the margin probably flatters the Golden Valley League a little. Uh, this should clearly have been the better side, but uh, you know it's really important that I think for the reputation of the league at least that they you know get a couple of goals back here. Here's an easy clearance though for Golden Valley. The hand pass comes out to the side for Andracano. Haven't called his name too often. Comes out to Bucks. Delivers up to Seawick at left half forward. He's got McDonald running by. Ignores him. Goes short back to Bucks. He got in the way of Hodgson, who I think was the intended target. Bucks too far out to score, you'd think. Man on the mark, 51 metres out. He delivers into the pocket. Just over the head of McDonald, who regathers, does his best to keep it in. Steps around, one, tried to work the one-two, but in the end, seen over by Gareth Newton in the left forward pocket. 4-12-36, the WRFL trailing the GVFL, 11-13-79. It's a 43-point margin into the 19th minute of this final term. Kane Petter for coming off below us. They might put him in cotton wool now. Yeah, look, they, he's probably done his work for the league. He'd be really proud to have been able to put that jumper on. He's got nothing to prove to anyone. So credit to stepping up and wanting to represent the jump as Keo now ball over to Jamison Daniels who's had six possessions in about the last three minutes. Out wide to Gus Byrne who takes a strong mark in the Warnock direction. He's too far out to score. Kick over the top now. Will bounce favourably for Marnie. Will it? No it won't. But he'll go back and try to win his own footy. He had four to beat. Couldn't on this occasion. Picked up there and cut off beautifully by one of your better players on the afternoon, Kennedy. But the kick is ineffective as it comes to the middle of the ground and it's chopped off by Tommy Priest. So Priest, he goes short for Keo, I think, in the middle. Puts it into a bit of space. Pickup gets in front there. The intended target in Mueller. It spills to a dangerous spot. Well done there by Boyd. Sells the dummy and kicks outside, but Keo intercepts. He gets onto his left boot, and this is going to fall in the lap of Picard, who, as Willow mentioned earlier, has been pretty serviceable for the home side. His kick wasn't great. Bucks did well, 
dinking little ball just too strong for Hamad. And it's chopped off by Norris, who can send the Golden Valley back inside. So Zaki Norris handballs back to Paddy. Who takes the big fly and looked as though he was sitting on his ground room armchair couch as he took that one. He sort of had the seated position look as he almost floated and froze in midair. He takes a really good grab. And this would put a huge exclamation mark and underline the win for the Goulburn Valley League as they would push it out to 49 points. Warnock rolls in. Warnock's kick is missing to the right. He's gotten better as the day's gone on, Warnock. He was uh, fairly quiet in the first half, but as the game's worn on, he's become more prominent as a target up forward. Him and Webster have been really damaging. Last eight or nine goals to the Golden Valley Go Take Football League. So it's been a domination in the second half, particularly since midway through the third quarter. A long ball from Jordan Boyd off hands. And I'd say with Nick play. Warnock, he's played in the last eight interleague games, I reckon. Mm. He And he's only 25, so I reckon he would have made his first appearance. And he always steps up for interleague. I don't know what it is. He just loves it. Just uh, loves that style of play. It uh, really suits his game. So Maloney, probably because he's getting silver service quite regularly yeah. from a myriad of quality midfielders, which I spoke about before the game. And now Teddy Linden, have a look at that for defence. Gets in front of his opponent there, spoils it. Then second effort, really good there too. Marks, handballs off to Keo. Keo now switches it to Matty Shannon. Shannon's got options galore. Take your pick, son. He'll go short now. Jamison Daniels just holds. Stops and props. Centres back to Matty Shannon. Matty Shannon runs in. Charges up to full forward. Mark taken. Webster, no. Hit the behind post. Yeah, that... That was, I suppose, a, a passage of play befitting the situation the match is in. It's late in the game, the result's gone. Matty Shannon was just running around on his own there. Uh, not a WRFL player within QE of him. It was just, you know, a lack of intensity from the opposition allowed him to just waltz into the forward 50. It's disappointing for the Western Region Football League. They're going to have to lick their wounds and... and and I want to, it's just because of the situation the game's in, because the result's gone and a bit of the heat's gone out of the game. I'm sure if that was in the, the first half or even the third quarter, there probably would have been tackles coming in from everywhere. But, you know, this, uh, the result is, uh, is beyond doubt now, and that's what happens. So, 44 points it is over the back. Can they try and keep some respect? On the scoreboard here, the Western Region Football League before this one blows right out to a 10-goaler. Gets kicked up to centre wing. Teddy Linden chases his opponent. Gee, he's been brilliant in defence this afternoon. Resolute. Mick Mattingly now. Silky pass over to Marnie. Marnie dropped it. Oh, his handball was cut off there. It was intended for Linden. Now around the corner comes uh, Jackson Edwards. Now this looks good from the Western Region Football League. Into a little bit of pocket. He's got a bit of time. He's got a bit of space. And he makes an absolute meal of what should have been the easiest of goals there. The Western Region Football League player. You might be able to help me out uh, with there. Uh, Swick. Swick. Yep. Yeah. One goal eight after half time to the Western Region Football League. Yeah, certainly not good enough. There's Pepe Cavalieri. <laughs> I think he's going to help the boundary rider try and get some stuff sorted. Oh, yeah. He's Can making I... some... There's a big executive meeting happening here <laughs> in the commentary box. As that, that kick out of bounds uh, nearly went through one of the windows here. Well, that would have been messy end of the day. The kick inside 50, Lockie Smith found front position for the Goulburn Valley League. Now it's loose, picked up. Oh, really slick hands there, Mattingly. Marnie, back to Boyd. And the boys that are really just uh, the class midfielders here are just racking up the disposals in the last quarter. Now McDonald, he intercepts it, cuts it off, runs in and misses again. Wow. The Western Region Footy League certainly had some chances in this last term but sadly for them they haven't been able to really convert them and there goes the siren and that does sound the victory of the day going to the Golden Valley League 11 14 80 
over the Western Region Football League. 4-14-38. That siren sounds the end of the game. And it does bring the sound of what is going to be a pretty strong celebration, you would have thought, of the Golden Valley League, who look very, very impressed with their efforts this afternoon. And so they should be. They were sensational today from pillar to post. And they run out 42-point winners here. And uh, very shortly, we're going to try and get down to our boundary riders. And Pepe will probably give me the signal when it's time to actually do that. But uh, absolutely sensational here from the Western Region uh, Football League in terms of their effort this afternoon. But it wasn't going to be as we now cross down the boundary. And Pepe Cavalieri is with the victorious coach in Brad Campbell. Thanks, gentlemen. I've got Brad Campbell, the coach of the Golden Valley Football League. Terrific performance today. How did you assess it? Yeah, it was a great win. It was a bit of a sort of scrappy game. I mean, conditions were perfect for footy, but um, a bit, of, bit of a scrappy game. Really tough, hard fought affair. Both sides probably wasted a lot of opportunities on goal. Um, I think it was that second quarter, which probably gave us the ascendancy. Other than that, it was probably pretty, pretty even on the scoreboard in the other few quarters. I thought our back line was terrific today. Uh, the midfield worked super hard and create a lot of good opportunities for us in the forward line um, whilst they wasted some, some chances were quite lively as well. What did you feel like the keys were coming into a, a game against a quality opposition like WRFL today? Yeah, it's always an element of unknown. You don't really know, although we know some, some guys uh, by name and where they've played, we don't really know them intimately. So we, we probably didn't try and focus too much on the oppo. Um, obviously, as the game goes on, there's a few little things that you see that they like to do and you want to try and try and uh, stop them playing their game, but I thought, you know, our boys, we just wanted to really be positive. Um, a lot of young guys within our group, so once they settle down, we just wanted, to, wanted them to really play with composure and play with play with a bit of flair and, 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 and back themselves and be, be really positive. Jason Walsh, who's joined us from the Shepherd and Radio Station um, today, gave us a hand and a, a lot of knowledge about your boys. Clearly, interleague means quite a bit to the, the boys. Um, talk us a little bit about that. Yeah, it does. It's, uh, it's obviously obviously the Metro leagues are, are starting to you know, ingrain themselves in interleague footy, but it's obviously been around the, the country for a while, and, and I know the Golden Valley League have always rated it fairly highly and something they're very, very proud of. Um, got a really long history with it within interleague footy, and but I, I like the concept. It's great to, to play different leagues and, and different venues, and you know our group would have got a lot, a lot out of that today. So, yeah, really, really happy with the win. We fully respect the Western Region Footy League. Um, we've had a lot of players sort of go back and forth from respective leagues, and we know a little bit about the league, and... Um, you know, it was a really good, hard-fought hard fought game, played in really good spirits. Yeah, well, you should be very proud. You were terrific today. Well done. Brad Campbell, the coach of the uh, Goulburn Valley Football League this afternoon. Too good. We'll see if we can uh, grab the Western Region Football League coach yeah. as well, Brad Julia. Very so, good interview there. Yes, uh, Brad Campbell giving some insight into uh, what drives the Goulburn Valley uh, Football Club representative teams. Certainly there seems to be a lot of pride around them about representing their region. Uh, probably something that hasn't always been associated with Metropolitan Leagues, but uh, we'll find out more from the WRFL point of view. Peppy's with uh, Brad Julia, the WRFL coach. Thanks, Kate. I've got Brad Julia with me, the WRFL coach. Brad, obviously not the result you're after. Just talk us through um, what didn't quite go your way today. Yeah, I just couldn't find a goal kicker, I think. It was because probably just couldn't team to get uh, inside 50 deep enough to, to, to really attack. Uh, on the back of that, couldn't defend it coming back out. And they, just the experience on the bigger grounds, I think they, they spread a lot better than us and we just couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, stop their run. Andrew Panay was um, certainly lively in the first half, so how much of a loss was it to, to lose him? Yeah, it's a, a big loss. Uh, so we were small forward, um, threw our balance out a little bit. Um, Another avenue for goal for goal. Another avenue for goal gone. So um, yeah, it, it did hurt us. There were times, I suppose, where you had chances and just convert. I suppose in the end, whether you put the pressure on them came down to that. Yeah, definitely. You, you, you kick four, four, 14. Um, I suppose it wasn't half time. I said we've got to get rewarded. For it. We just weren't finishing off. We, I think, the, I thought the second and third quarter we really controlled a lot of the game. We just couldn't couldn't score. Um, yeah, four 14. It isn't going to win your game. Four. And overall, the interleague experience, we know that the have struggled at times, especially the past few years. It's been seen from an outsider looking in that the buy-in was there this year. It just maybe didn't transpire on game the way we saw it. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I can't fault the effort of the boys and, and the buy-in. Um, definitely from around the league. I spoke to them first and I said said if, um, if I had to pick the 23 but before the start of it, the, the 
yeah, we just yeah just couldn't get it done on the day. But uh, yeah, still very proud they, they they ran it out and toughed it out. But yeah, just couldn't couldn't get it done. Good on you, Brad. Condolences on the result. Thanks for the time. Brad Julia, the Western Region Football League coach this afternoon, obviously disappointed, but hopefully some strides forward for this league in terms of what they can show in a statewide competition. Back to you guys. Thanks.